Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be upgrading the gauges from this A4 B8 to the ones from the A5. Hopefully, uh, this can be done decently easy, but remains to be seen. What I recommend you to do is get one of these uh, tools. It's a plastic that will not scratch the plastics inside your car. I used random kitchen, uh, kitchen knives and those things uh, from some sort of plastic for steaks that... Uh, anyway, that's not how you do it. This thing is quite cheap. I don't think it's even $10 and uh, it will last a long, long time. So anyway, let's get uh, that out of the way and get started i put my steering wheel as low as it can actually go and my camera will focus on anything but on what it should and then with this particular tool right here i went beneath this let me try and show you from the side and just pulled on it like this and i had a bit of leverage in here and then i pulled it to undo this particular clip right there and it's about the same uh, same thing on the other side. You start from the bottom and go all the way up and there is your clip right there. And at this point this particular thing should uh, break free and we we'll ju simply just let it down. It's, it doesn't bad, uh, bother you when sitting like this. So you have the screws to the cluster accessible at that point but we still need to get this thing out and this thing out and they will actually be replaced with ones from the a5 but we will be keeping that button do not put the a5 button in your car it will give an error anyway and uh, the ones from the a5 i already wrapped in uh, black carbon fiber anyway so it will be a bit weird when I put them in because they will not be grey like these ones. And if you want to see a video about that wrapping process, I will have it linked in the description of this one. So let's start prying this thing out. It will have a clip right here in the corner, which actually clips into this um, uh, cluster in here. And I will just pry it out and make sure you do not remove this trim right here. It should remain on this vent. As you can see, this is where it clips into the cluster. And then I slowly go all around and pull it out. It has a bunch of clips all around. Normally, try to keep this trim in. If it comes out, you will put it back later. But try to keep it in from the start. It might be a bit easier. Anyway, hard to do with one hand, but you can see everything is coming out slowly. Do not pull on them like a crazy guy. There are clips, they will break if you force them. So slowly, try to go all around, it should be good. Yeah, so the trim actually popped out because it's held with nothing in place. It just sits there nicely and when you put the rest of it uh, on, it holds it in place. Make sure these things do not pop out. If they do, it will be a pain to put everything back together. So I will be keeping the trim on top of them just to remind myself do not touch that area. Okay, started to undo this thing. Again, it has the same type of round clip that goes into the cluster and metal clips on the inside. I think uh, somewhere two around here and two around here, something like that. So you need to go with a tool from underneath and uh, what I actually did was something like this. I went with the tool in and forced it a bit like this to rotate. And here I think I just pushed on it. Uh, make sure you do not damage anything underneath. That's not a real mark. That's, that's just dirt that should get out of there. Anyway, yeah. This one is a bit trickier to get out. And make sure you do not break anything. Do not pull on this corner like a crazy man. You will break it. So that's not how you should do it. Get your fingers underneath at this point And start pulling on it. You can hear it coming out slowly. So this is the 
somewhat proper way to do it. Yeah, I cannot undo this corner with one hand, so let me use both of them. And it's good, and you can see the second uh, clip in there. And I just need to get this hazard light out of here. I think it has some metal clips on the side, on each side one. Let me focus one on this side and one on the other side. But I will not get it out until I do all that I need to do with the cluster itself. If something fails there, there is no point on me getting that button out. So that will be the last thing that I will do. So let's undo the three screws underneath and I think two on top. Yep, that's about right. Let's get this cluster out. To undo these screws you need T10 Torx. So let's get to it. No, 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 no. Scrap all of that. <laughs> this will take the cluster itself apart. We just need to undo that one and that one right there. Two big screws and I think one in the middle right there. You can see it. So let's get those first. So for those you need an 8 millimeter hexagonal head. So let's do that. Okay, and this thing is out. And make sure you do not drop those screws inside your dash. You will reach levels of uh, of swearing. You you would not even think uh, they're possible. So yeah. Now I need to remove the plug from the back of this thing. From what I can see here, I think this orange thingy needs to actually come towards us and clear that clip right there so I need the screwdriver to push the clip a bit in and pull on this orange thingy and that will probably unlock this whole connector so I can get it out and that's exactly how it's done and don't mind that white cable that's the cable I took to install my center speaker because this car had a really poor sound system that video will also be linked in the description if you want to watch it. So, yeah, this thing simply unlocks. And now we are left with this thingy that I'm going to take inside and tinker with it. Getting ready to do the swap. Swap, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I want to put this front mask and the needles the pointers in this cluster. I am going to keep the dials themselves because let me just show you. This thing has a way shorter travel compared to this one. So if I put dials from this thing into the A4, from the A5 to the A4, it will never never show either zero either uh, 90 degrees same for fuel you would be able to set it to to show perfectly either zero or either full never both of them so that would really annoy me yes my dials might not perfectly fit with this mask we will see how they look hopefully they look decent uh, i will do a a test fit before changing the needles uh, if i don't like something i will stop at this point but hopefully all is good because i don't have a plan b and yeah another thing i will clean this really well both of them because i don't want dust getting inside so I'm, i need to make sure the outside is clean first and i will start working on the a5 cluster i haven't touched mine apart from clean, uh, cleaning it undo this screw this screw and this screw and see what we can find inside. Nope, sorry, made a mistake. Those should not be undone. And you should undo the ones from the back. Because these things actually, let me try and hold this with my leg, hold everything like a sang uh, sandwich together. So if you undo those screws, that one right there for example, and undo this clip, and search for that one no search for another clip uh, what okay uh, this clip right here you should be able to take this whole assembly everything above the white line should come off so yeah i actually undid this part from this one which is not good i have to move them together 
as you can see it's starting to come off make sure you do not break these clips bend them slowly and just enough to clear the uh, the notch in there uh, and i didn't undo these two screws i do not think they are required for what we are doing so let them in and it's apart now i will do the same to mine just to test fit that thing on my cluster and make sure it looks good with the dials these dials as you can see they have uh, a, a raised geometry in here not uh, ideal to touch them but i'm not going to use them anyway uh, because this is a uh, diesel i have petrol this is miles per hour i have kilometers per hour and again this will not be accurate so that's why i'm not using these dials if you accept this will not be accurate and this will not be accurate you can put these dials in for sure they look better than the ones in mine but i'm going to try and use mine and if i need to use these things i'm in trouble because i cannot as i said before they are not good for my car so let's undo this so you've seen it first on my channel it's a fit but not a perfect fit as you can see we have a bit of white down there and i was quite annoyed by this until I actually realized do you see what I'm seeing here this almost looks like a black marker but I think it's some sort of paint so guess what I'm doing next yep this comes apart and that area will be painted what the hell this is actually black marker on the factory one somebody screwed up and this is cost effective for them somebody going with a marker on this thing for each and one every one of them although in china yeah probably it's more it's cheaper like this than to to make an automatic painting device so I don't feel bad at all about uh, going with a marker. Actually, I'm going to paint it. I think I'm going to be better than the factory one. Awesome. And now I see actually why they screwed up. Here, we don't have a dial. This one extends up until here. So they wanted to use the same uh, light guide, but... Uh, yep, fail. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to take off this... Uh, dials on mine and mask everything really well and only paint the areas that uh, need to become become black and i will paint it with mac uh, matte black so that should be quite uh, quite a decent fix for this thing and uh, yeah next i will try to take uh, out the the needles from this one i just want to show you something in this direction they move freely here they lock in place some say to force them to go all the way around and force them like this past the the max i am not going to do that i don't like that idea maybe that's proper but i'm going to test something else i'm going to get one of them out uh, by simply uh, putting a bit of this thing i will cut it around or somehow then I will cut a line and a tiny hole so I can slide it in there. This has a way low chance of actually scratching that. And once I have this, I'm going to try and put my fingernails and pull this thing slowly up. I, if I see it not working, I will do that method, but I don't like forcing them. So I don't think that's good. And I'm going to use this, this to not scratch the dials. And obviously I will try it with uh, bad dials because I don't want to destroy my good ones. So yeah. Well, nothing really worked, so I uh, ended up removing the pointers by just forcing them past the stop in this direction, counterclockwise, and just continuing to pull while I rotate. And in the end, they rotate faster and faster and come uh, off. Make sure you do not move it like that, you could break uh, this tiny little thing and you do not want that. The small ones are a bit trickier, you need to push them past the stop in this direction for this one, but for the other one it's still the same direction as the main ones. 
but this one as you can see will hit in here so you need to to sh uh, slowly lift it just until it clears eh, hard to do but it can be done if you need to remove the dials like I do for painting the edge around here uh, practice on the ones that you don't intend on keeping they only have you can see here this gray double-sided tape so it simply uh, peels off you start from somewhere around the edge and slowly put your hands under underneath uh, them and pry them out make sure you do not bend them too sharply in any area you could create a, create a kink or how it's called uh, and that would look extremely extremely unpleasant so yeah these ones for me are going back at least and uh, I need to try and get mine off without issues hopefully just wanted to add something else maybe you can notice even in the video this plastic it's a bit yellower than this one that's because my car is uh, 2010 and this is uh, 2016 so it's six year the mine is six years uh, oh, cannot talk six years older than this one and that translates to something else I cannot remove the dials almost at all and I don't want to risk bending them that would create hell of a problem for me so I'm just going to lift them up so I can put paint a bit underneath and same in this small dot and a bit in this corner that would be enough if you are changing the dials then it shouldn't matter you just rip them off and whatnot and are careful with the new ones yeah anyway i made stuff a bit harder for me but at least i will have the correct uh, uh, i don't know uh, level of the fuel yeah kind of sucks but it is what it is I decided to have these things the right way then be 100% clean install with the new dials and this was really 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 cheap because nobody in my country will want it like this so yeah ready to do some painting as you can see prepared the area I'm not going to spray paint I'm going to use this really fine brush uh, matte black to the rescue I'm going to spray it in here and then with a the brush apply it and to know where to apply it you can see here where it actually the black one goes beyond the contour uh, of the white one so this white one was actually made for these dials and then they uh, came and decided mm, let's put some fancier dials and they went uh, over the edge of it and that is where we have issues so yeah I know I need to paint in this area around here this area here and I need to paint this dot right here because this thing doesn't have it so yeah let's get to it while the cluster is drying the good one it would be a great idea to practice installing the your old needles on the cluster that you will no longer use and how I think I will do it as you can see I've just slightly pushed it in and it's just a bit after zero this is how it was on my original one same here insert it just a tiny bit and then search for that stop as you can see here the stop is is nowhere <laughs> it means it's not tight enough here is the stop now so I'm just going to rotate it yeah here is the stop push it just a tiny bit and then rotate through the stop something like this and here is the stop I can feel it now you simply push it in make sure you do not push it too much this is not enough so I need to push it a bit more but here is our stop mechanical stop and the upper position here is a stop which is perfect yeah in the end paint uh, is not as matte I, as I thought it would be and that is mainly because I put a too 
thick of a layer. I should have, uh, I don't know, put a really thin layer, wait a few hours, put another really thin layer. Was a bit um, impatient. I could fix this just by letting this completely dry and putting just a thin layer on top. I don't think this will bother me enough to wait. And maybe when it fully cures and dries, maybe just a tiny bit it will be more more towards the matte side of things. Anyway, good enough for me. Uh, it's not white for sure. Let's uh, put in the needles and start to put this thing back together and make sure there is no dust on the dials or inside the glass or whatever when you close it. Needles in position. And uh, yeah, there are a few specks of dust, so I must get rid of them. Uh, also from that thing, so I'm not going to film wh while I install uh, the mask on it. Just not to waste time when I get this perfectly clean. Normally, just try to blow on it. Do not uh, spit on it by mistake when you are blowing. But if there is something really stubborn... Um, makeup brush a new one those really really soft ones will do wonders i finally did it i love how this thing is looking and yeah zero chances of somebody figuring out we have uh, something down there my camera will not focus on anything today probably because of reflections and whatnot so I'm quite happy how this thing turned out. Let's see if we can actually install it uh, inside the car. Obviously put the screws back in. T10 Torx again. Some would say to test it like this before it's closed, but normally I found a stop for every needle. So they are exactly in the same position that I took them from. So I think it should be okay, but Depends on you. I will try and put the screws and see what happens. If I'm lucky, all is well. Plugged it in. Powered on. Yeah, it's not quite perfect. But uh, honestly, uh, having a sort of OCD my whole life, I've learned that when I insist on doing something perfect, it's the biggest chance of it failing miserably and doing something really, really long. So this is good enough for me. I'm not doing anything else to it. Let me just uh, take out the contact in this thing. And you can see the needle sweep working perfectly. Happy as I could ever be. And uh, yeah, it seems the time is actually kept Come on, focus on the time. It's actually kept inside this thing because it uh, resetted. And just want to show you something else. The connector itself, when you are plugging it in, make sure this is uh, as... Oh, it already latched in place. No, it's not latched in place. What? Get out of there. It's a, uh, as forward as it can be when you plug it in to the max. And only after you plug it in, you could hear it probably starting up. Only then push it and uh, latch it in place. Place. Sorry about that. We have a bit of a problem. And as you can see, it's out once again because... And it's not from what I did. Ah, something in this front mask assembly, which is two parts uh, clamped together, is squeaking. So I need to take it apart and see any signs of abrasion. Uh, damn it, this is not a good product. This is the only sign of abrasion that I can see. And it matches with this. Yep. Cool. Not cool. I will try to file this down and see if it still makes noise. And if it still does, search further. Although I, I really hope it doesn't. Actually, hold your horses. I found even more signs of abrasion. <sighs> I will put some felt in this particular position. And maybe then it will stop. Filed down the ejector mark. 
put felt in these both areas <sighs> and yeah hopefully it works I'm actually doing uh, the thing that uh, they should have done a bit better when they uh, designed this thing we do the same at work but yeah uh, it seems they missed this or maybe from such a long use but yeah we still have tests no no they missed it they just missed it that's it yeah so magneti marelli if you see this video hit me up with an offer i think i can do a better job than the team that tested this thing second time is the lucky one just wanted to add when you put everything back together make sure this thing starts to go into the hole from which it came out do not try to tuck it in like this or something you will break uh, the connector or stuff like that so make sure it starts to go in and next hopefully all is well I'm going to start putting parts back in as you can see the new ones are not the same shape as the old ones but the hole itself is so uh, the chromed part will uh, work perfectly uh, but it seems the old one actually had some felt on it so I will move it to the new one just in case but on the inside uh, I don't have on the new one this raised area neither do I have this thing there is something here but it, it's only a centering uh, yep so a few things they decided not to to put on the new model probably because it's a bit smaller or something who knows or maybe from the way it tucks uh, under the the cluster i don't know anyway let's do this i decided just to put a felt on top and not on the edge like the other one had because mm, this is how i feel it, it it should be okay i i don't know looks okay to me at this point anyway Let's see what we get. And voila. You just wiggle it and make it go like that slowly in. And then start pushing around. It should clip in fairly fairly easy. So, ew, that's not... I didn't do that now. That's an old scratch. Um, it should clip in fairly easy. If it doesn't, something is not uh, in its proper place. But I must admit this thing looks awesome. <laughs> this looks really really good Whew, I'm really curious to see how everything will uh, turn out when it's uh, finished and yeah I remembered a phone has a flashlight <sighs> yeah so sorry about all the really bad images up until now you know what I think I did a boo boo probably this should be clipped in uh, before putting everything else in place so let me try and do that now under that thing somehow so I removed the connector you simply pu uh, push on this thing here and pull it out yeah we have light but we have zero focusing this phone is completely stupid still don't know how to remove the connector itself the switch actually okay so this is how I think should it should be done. You just put something here to push that metal into place and you should do the same on the other side. And then simply push on this thing for it to come out. So I need to get a, another small screwdriver now. Once I have pushed both of these I felt uh, this thing going down slowly. So I think now I can actually re remove the second one. I've switched places because this was easier to access with a huge screwdriver. Anyway, and now it should, yeah, <laughs> that's about it. So these things only latch in place. That's about all there is to it. Let's pop the switch in its new uh, location. and it's locked in place awesome Whew, like it should be there and i want to put the felts on this edge in the exact manner they are on this particular edge here 
So, yeah, in, in here on this side, I will not put it exactly as I did on the other, but I will put just a tiny bit on top. So, I have them here, and let's get to it. It seems the A5 had more felt, so yeah, I kind of went to town with it. Just made sure it's nowhere where it will uh, be seen at the end. So, let's push this thing in. Obviously, first plug that uh, in. And it's in and looking awesome. Oh, what I was filming. <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, I was so happy to look at it that I forgot. Uh, I need to show it to you also. Ah, yeah, this is good. The only a bit weird thing is the gaps right here and right here. So I don't know, maybe also this part is a bit different in the A5. I will investigate, maybe I will change it, maybe I will not. I do not know at this point, but uh, see, it might be different. Don't know, really, really don't know. But there are also uh, some tiny panel gaps in other places, so maybe this is how it's supposed to be. They didn't want to make it too pointy at this end. I don't know, if you see an A5, <laughs> look at this. I will also again try to investigate. Anyway, it's all in. I will end this video tomorrow in daylight because I want to, to show it to you better. This is not uh, doing it uh, justice, but it's cool. <laughs> I really like it. So, let's continue tomorrow. And it's time to end this video. And then, <laughs> I would do this whole thing again for sure. You do not even see those problem areas that I paint, painted black. You do not have any issue with them at day or at night. And honestly, this thing is looking really, really, really nice in my opinion. I don't know how it is for you on the video. But yeah, really, really nice looking. Again, for sure, I would do this without hesitation. Yep, so it was a pain uh, from start to finish, but it is 100% worth it. It's, it. It has transformed this car. And from what I see during daytime, those areas I think are okay, and I don't think the A5 has another piece here. This is just how it was made, and yeah, that's about it. So, what can I say? Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and it helps you also transform the dash of your car. And yeah, maybe subscribe, check out my other videos, and as always, see you in the next one. Bye.